Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna go over how to manually program your Valentine 1 Gen 2. Now, if you haven't already checked it out, uh, I've got now my complete review of the new V1 Gen 2 available on my website. Uh, so take a look at that. I'll have a link down in the video description so you can learn all about the new V1 Gen 2. Now, when it comes to programming the V1, the easiest way to do it is actually with your cell phone. Uh, I've got another video that goes over how to program the V1 with your phone, and this is the way that I would actually recommend most people do it. Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier and more intuitive to go in and uh, adjust everything through your phone. Plus, there's more options that are available in the phone that aren't available in the detector itself, and you have the ability to pre-program different profiles ahead of time so that as you're driving, you can just switch between different profiles and change settings in the fly, and you don't have to go dig through any of the menu options. However, in this video, we're gonna go over, well, all the different menu options available in the V1. So if you wanna just maybe quickly change a setting or two, or you're just curious what all the different options are, that's what we're gonna be covering here in this video. Uh, now, on Valentine's website, they have information available for how to program the V1 and uh, some information about what all the different menu options are. I'll link to that down in the video description as well so that you've got uh, more information that you can read over regarding how to program your V1 Gen 2. So starting off, let's take a closer look at the detector and get familiar with the buttons and operation of the detector real quick. Uh, right here on the front, we've got our power slash mute button. You can long press this to power the detector on and off. Uh, if it's powered on like this, you can just uh, give a kind of short press of this power button. It'll change between different logic modes. Uh, the big A is going to be all bogeys mode. This is going to be how you can uh, have the detector alert to all of the different bogeys or signals that it sees. Uh, if you press and hold and switch to the little L, this is going to be logic mode. It uh, performs the same as all bogeys mode, but it will actually mute any of the weak radar signals that you pick up. So uh, any maybe door openers or something nearby uh, or any signals that are a little bit farther away, the V1 will mute these in logic mode. And then only as you get closer and the signals get stronger, uh, only then will it begin uh, audibly alerting normally. Uh, then for the quietest experience, what Valentine recommends is uh, you switch over to advanced logic mode, uh, which is going to be the big L like this. With advanced logic mode, uh, this is going to be doing some additional logic to try and filter out altogether uh, some sources of false alerts like door openers in shopping centers. Uh, plus, uh, in addition to what uh, logic mode does with muting any weak alerts, advanced logic mode will just hide those alerts altogether. So not only audibly mute them, but also visually hide them from showing up on the detector at all. Because it's pretty much hiding any weak alerts, you will see a reduction of range uh, when running it in advanced logic mode. And so if you need the maximum performance, that's not really what this is geared for. This is more for uh, urban areas where you just want the quietest experience possible. Uh, if you want better performance and a little bit of K-band filtering, I would switch to uh, logic mode with the small L. Now on the top of the detector, there's gonna be uh, two volume buttons right here. Uh, one is gonna be for volume down. The other one is gonna be for volume up. Uh, this is gonna allow you to actually adjust the alert volume of the detector. You also have the ability to go in here and adjust the muted volume of the detector too. Uh, with the V1, a muted alert is not truly muted or silent, typically. Uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna alert at the normal volume and then you have the ability to just tap the mute button and it's gonna reduce the volume to a secondary lower muted level. And you have the ability to control the muted alert volume too. The way that you do that is uh, when you see you're going in and adjusting the volume like this, you're just gonna press the mute button right here and you'll see that that mute icon pops up there on top of the screen. Then you're able to go in and then adjust the muted volume. So we'll go like this, press the mute button, and now we have another set of volume controls here specifically for the muted alert volume level. If you want the detector to be truly silent when you press the mute button, you do actually have that option. It's gonna be one of the menu options here available in the V1. And uh, with that said, let's actually go ahead and start diving into the menu options. Now, in order to get into the menu here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is press both of the top two buttons here on top of the V1. So the volume up and volume down. If you press and hold both of those buttons, it's gonna drop you into this screen here where all of the LEDs are gonna light up. Then we're gonna go over to the right once and then you'll notice right here, the first thing it's gonna do is uh, it's gonna give you the software version uh, of what you're running here on your current V1. Now you can see that I'm running 4.1018. Uh, this is the first software version that was available here for the V1 Gen 2. Now over time, there's gonna be new software updates that you can download to your V1 Gen 2 using your phone. Uh, and as new updates come out, some of the settings that we go over here in this video may change. There may be new features that come out uh, that you're not gonna see here in this video. So as you're going through this video, if you see that uh, maybe there's some features that I don't cover here, uh, take a look at the link in the video description. You'll find some updated information uh, maybe that comes out after I shoot this video. Now the other thing that you'll see here 
here on the screen is the arrow. Uh, if the arrow is up, that means you have the detector set to factory defaults. Uh, if the arrow is down, it means you've actually gone in and changed some of the default options here in the V1. If you want to reset it back to factory defaults, press and hold this button here and you'll see the arrow flips up to the top and now it means that your V1 is set back to factory defaults. Next, going into the different menu options, we're just gonna press right here, uh, and this is gonna drop us into the first menu option. This first option here is gonna be for X-Band. So if you wanna turn X-Band on and off, you have the ability here. Uh, the arrow up means that the detector is set to its factory default option, which is X-Band turned on. If you wanna turn off X-Band, you're just gonna press and hold the uh, mute button right there. You'll see the arrow flips down, and now X-Band is disabled. Now, something to point out is arrow up means factory default. It doesn't mean the feature is turned on. With some of the menu options here, arrow up means the feature is turned on. With other menu options, the up arrow means the feature is turned off. So it's a little bit confusing. So definitely reference the uh, the information on Valentine's website. I'll put them up on screen as well. Um, but keep in mind, the up arrow means the factory default option. Now, coming back here to the V1, as you can see, we've got X-Band disabled, which is how most people are probably going to want to run the V1. X-Band is phased out of most of the country at this point. Uh, it's actively in use in Ohio, uh, New Jersey, and a few rural places here and there, but uh, for most people you can safely turn off X-Band and help cut out all the, well, false alerts that you'll get otherwise. Now moving on to the next option, uh, the next option for number two is going to be for K-Band. If you want the ability to uh, turn off K-Band, you can do that right here. Again, press and hold and that'll turn K-Band back on. Next, we're gonna go over, the next option is gonna be for KA band. Same thing here, you have the ability to turn KA band detection on and off, but it's pretty much in use all over the US, so I would definitely recommend leaving this feature on. Uh, now, some of these menu options will change if you are gonna be running the detector internationally and you switch the detector into Euro mode. Uh, I'll talk about that once we get into the Euro mode options, but uh, we're going through the options here with the detector actually set up in USA mode. Now, the next option is gonna be for front laser detection. Uh, if you see a lot of false alerts with laser, you can always turn front laser detection off. Personally, I think this is a good idea because I find the V1 falses quite a bit uh, to other vehicles up ahead that have laser-based collision avoidance systems. And so if you see a lot of false alerts on laser, uh, you can just turn laser off like this. This is how I run my V1. And then I just rely on my laser jammers to actually protect me against laser, not just notify me of when the officer is already shooting me. Now, one thing I like about the V1 is it has actually separate controls for both front and rear laser detection, uh, which is going to be actually coming up in one of the future menu options. Now, the next option here is going to be uh, how the detector actually mutes itself. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, by default, uh, when you press the mute button on the detector, or maybe it's muted by your phone or some other way, maybe low speed muting, uh, the detector is not going to go totally silent. It's going to drop down to the secondary muted alert volume level. Uh, if you'd like the ability to truly silence the detector when you press the mute button, you have that option here. You're just going to want to go and change this setting uh, to arrow down. And now when you go to uh, mute the detector, it's truly going to mute the alert and go totally silent. By default, though, uh, it is going to be the arrow up option. And uh, with this option, when the detector is muted, uh, it's going to allow you to continue to hear the alert and the ramp up. And as you get farther and closer to the signal uh, and give you a better idea of what's going on. So that's the default option here. Now the next menu option also has to do with the muting alerts. This has to do with uh, what happens if you're seeing multiple signals um, and the V1 is going to be alerting you to the presence of additional signals. Uh, the bogey counter on the front of the V1, it's got uh, some numbers that can actually tell you how many signals the V1 is seeing at a time. Now let's say that you've uh, are seeing a signal first and then you go to mute the original signal. Then the detector wants to say, hey, I'm seeing an additional signal. When it sees an additional signal, it's gonna give you a new bogey alert tone or a special tone saying, hey, I'm seeing a new signal and I wanna get your attention and then I'm gonna resume beeping uh, and alerting normally. Now, what this menu option is for, it's basically saying what happens if you first see a signal, uh, then you mute it, and then the detector is going to say, now I'm seeing an additional signal. Do you want the new bogey alert tone to alert at full volume, which is the default, or do you want the new bogey alert tone to also kind of remain down at the lower muted alert level? Um, that way it stays a little bit quieter. By default, what it's going to do is if you have the V1 muted, uh, the new bogey alert tone is going to alert at full volume.
I personally don't really like this setup because if you're in a shopping center, let's say, uh, with a bunch of door openers around, if you're going and trying to mute the V1, uh, as it keeps seeing all these new K-band door openers, it's going to keep alerting at full volume uh, to all the new signals that it's seeing. And it just winds up making the detector pretty chatty uh, in shopping center parking lots. For this reason, I actually like having this feature turned off. Uh, and this way, if you have the detector muted or some maybe background low speed muting is kicking in, uh, it's not going to give you the new bogey alert tone at full volume in shopping center. So it just basically helps keep the detector quieter uh, when you're driving around parking lots. The next option has to do with uh, rear X and K band alerts. Now signals up ahead are more likely to be a threat as you're driving towards them uh, and signals back behind you, they're less likely to be a threat. And for that reason, if you like the ability to uh, mute any K band or X band signals that are back behind you, uh, you have that option here available in the menu. Uh, to do that, you're gonna go to this option and you're just gonna flip the arrow down. Now this menu option, it's only gonna take effect uh, if you're running the detector in logic mode or advanced logic mode. If you're running it in all bogies mode, this menu option is not going to do anything. Now, the next option is going to be for Euro mode. Uh, by default, the detector is set up in, uh, well, USA mode to run in the US, but if you're driving internationally, you might want to actually configure your detector a little bit differently. Uh, and if that's the case, you can actually switch it into Euro mode if you're driving maybe outside of North America. Now, Euro mode, it's going to do a number of different things. Uh, for example, it's going to change the uh, default frequencies that the V1 scans for on KA band. Uh, you can go and change them afterwards if you like, but the default frequencies for KA will be different. Additionally, it's going to change the K-band frequency range that the V1 scans for. Instead of scanning down to uh, 24.050, it's actually going to allow you to scan all the way down to 23.9. Additionally, if you go into the detector now, you'll actually see another option available if you go back, uh, which is option H. This is going to be for KU band detection. By default, KU band is turned off, but if you want, you can turn on KU band detection like this. Additionally, switching into Euro mode is going to change the operation uh, of the front button here on the detector. And so if we take a look at that, uh, we'll just press and hold both of the buttons here on the detector. Uh, up on top, it's going to power cycle the detector and go back in. And you'll see now that uh, it's going to be set up in Euro mode. Uh, now in Euro mode, we don't have the uh, logic modes, all bogies, logic, and advanced logic. Uh, this is going to work a little bit different. Uh, if you look at the front of the detector, you'll see a big U now. And this lets you know that the detector is set up to scan both uh, K-band and K-A-band. If you want to disable K-band detection, you just press and hold the button there, and it'll switch now to a lower case U. Uh, this is going to scan uh, KA band, but not K band. Now here in the US, again, there's no need to run Euro mode. It's cool. I like the ability of actually being able to turn K band on and off on the fly like this. That's only available in Euro mode. But other than that, you lose access to the logic modes, which really help with the false alert filtering. Uh, plus, unlike the V1 Gen 1, uh, you no longer need to enable Euro mode to get access to your uh, custom sweeps or custom frequencies. That was something that we needed uh, in order to maximize the performance here of the V1. So we, even in the US, we would actually run Euro mode to get access to custom sweeps. But, and I'll talk about this once we get into the section, there is now a new version of custom sweeps on the V1 Gen 2, which is called custom frequencies. Uh, it's similar, but it does operate a little bit differently. Um, there's no performance benefit to custom frequencies, kind of the equivalent of custom sweeps, uh, with the V1 Gen 2 the way that there was on the V1 Gen 1. So long story short, there's really no advantage to running USA mode here, or sorry, uh, Euro mode, uh, if you're driving in the US. So if you're running in the US, leave it in USA mode. So switching this arrow back to arrow up, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, disable Euro mode. So the next option like this is gonna be the lowercase t. Uh, this is gonna be our K-band verifier. By default, uh, K-band verifier is turned on. If you wanna turn that off, you can do that here. Uh, but I would definitely recommend leaving this turned on because it's gonna help filter out a lot of false alerts from other cars nearby with blind spot monitoring systems. So uh, this I would definitely recommend leaving on in most situations. And as a quick note, you'll notice it's uh, lowercase t. Uh, this feature used to be called TMF or TMF2, or called the Junk K-Fighter. Uh, now on the V1 Gen 2, this feature is called uh, the K-Verifier, but it's still the uh, lowercase t here uh, in the menu. Next, we've got a lowercase n, and this is going to give us the ability to enable or disable rear laser detection. Uh, there's actually a sensor right here in the V1 to detect uh, laser coming from behind. If you want to turn that off, you have the ability here now uh, with the V1 Gen 2. 
Uh, this can be particularly helpful if you find some sources of false alerts from behind. Uh, I've heard people report sometimes maybe your cell phone on your windshield can actually cause false laser alerts on the V1 from behind. And if you encounter this, for example, uh, you can actually turn off rear laser detection independent of front laser detection. Uh, you're much more likely to get a save uh, with laser from the front than you will from behind. It's a lot tougher to actually detect it from behind, but the V1 does have the ability here and it gives you independent control of both front and rear laser detection. Now, finally, uh, the last option here is going to be for custom frequencies. Uh, and this just gives you the ability to turn custom frequencies on and off. Uh, if you have custom frequencies enabled, and we'll just again drop back here into the uh, the main screen for the detector. Uh, when custom frequencies are enabled, you'll actually see a little dot here on screen. You saw it said actually CF for custom frequencies. And now there's going to be a little dot in the bottom right hand corner of the bogey counter. Uh, this just lets you know the detector is running with custom frequencies. Now, custom frequencies here in the V1, again, you can basically just go in and tell uh, which frequency ranges the detector is going to be alerting you to uh, on K band or on KA band. Uh, again, this has no impact or performance with the V1 Gen 2 the way that custom sweeps used to do uh, on the V1 Gen 1. The reason is the V1 Gen 2 sweeps so much faster uh, than the V1 Gen 1 that there's really no benefit to trying to do like smaller frequency ranges. It's already incredibly fast out of the box. And so this is just going to be choosing which frequencies you want the detector to alert you to. This doesn't have any impact or performance. So this is custom frequencies for the V1 Gen 2 as opposed to custom sweeps for the V1 Gen 1. And so, yeah, that's it. That's just a quick look here at uh, manually programming the V1 Gen 2, uh, all the different menu options, etc. Again, down in the video description, I'm going to have more information, uh, especially the information from Valentine uh, that explains all of this and gives you more information, especially as maybe uh, new versions of the V1 come out and this video will eventually start to go out of date. So if you see any different options that are available uh, in your V1, if you're running a newer version than I have here in my V1, that will be the best resource for you uh, to learn a little bit more about the uh, latest and greatest version of the V1 if you're running something newer than 4.1018. So awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.